But there's another one, which is aliens are part of God's creation. This is one that many people commonly accept, a more open-minded viewpoint held by, especially evangelicals that are conservatives, that Christians, you know, if indeed there's extraterrestrials in any forms, they're part of God's vast, diverse creation that he created a billion stars and a billion universes. And these believers tend to see potential alien life as yet another testament to the immense power of the creative God. So just a month, about a month ago, there was one of the most realistic encounters that's been, I mean, I think our whole nation was watching it, that uh, Vegas had a landing of some sort of ship that was captured by a lot of different cameras. It was something from the sky fell. And then some some people in their backyard, they took some, some um, video footage and they went into their backyard and they met some aliens, supposedly. They met, you know, uh, we don't know if it's true, allegedly, I should say, instead of supposedly, allegedly. And at first it was cried out that it could be a hoax. Some of the news channels covered it, then they didn't cover it. But then the police went back and they said they, they did some investigation research and it wasn't a hoax. Now, this family wanted to get out of the media light, so they disappeared because they didn't want to talk anymore. They didn't have any new information. And just like if you have somebody break in your house, they probably won't come back again. Well, the aliens came and they weren't there again. So whatever this was, the family went down on record for saying it was aliens. And whatever this was, we don't know. But, you know, on the, onto the other story, I don't know if you saw this, but it was pretty interesting to me that this family, you know, their story kind of resonated with a lot of people. I don't know if you know that a lot of people who have had alien encounters are Christians. And so most of them occur in North America, around the world. I'm not sure why. But I think Christianity has had to address more in 2023 the issue of extraterrestrial life and UAPs and UFOs than ever before at any other year. And not only is the Pentagon reporting over 400 UFOs or UAPs, many credible whistleblowers are coming forward. And we've mentioned that on our previous episodes about aliens, extraterrestrial lives that they're calling non-humans now in America and possibly other countries are working directly with alien beings or at least known about their existence according to these alleged you know, uh, whistleblowers. The UFOs are even reported to show physics that we just don't understand. Now, this is by the Pentagon, that there's physics we don't understand. Hundreds of reports. There have been uh, over 500 military reports with 100 of those reports just this year showing unexplained uh, activities that they can't they can't quantify. I think that's really wild. So we have all of these reports. Now we have extraterrestrial non-human lives being seen in a number of cases that the government's exploring. And one of the more interesting facts in, is that North America and the UK dwarf all other places for UFO reports. So if aliens are real, they must really like studying American cultures because a recent poll finds that United States is a UFO hotspot of the entire world. It's not even close compared to everywhere else. I was looking at the survey, and according to the survey commissioned by bonusfinder.com, a staggering 92% of all reported UFO sightings take place in the U.S. So 92%, 126,000 reported sightings across all states since record keeping began. America's neighbor to the north, Canada, comes in second with just only 5,696 sightings during the same period. Interesting alien spacecraft like to stick around longer up north with UFO incidents in Canada lasting for over five hours per sighting. Can you imagine five hours per sighting, many multiple witnesses per sighting? The United Kingdom reported the third most sightings, 3,146. But obviously, no matter where people are seeing strange objects in the sky, the story is often the same. The poll finds that the most common UFO description is one of strangely shaped lights in the sky. And I just, I wonder what this is. I know that you guys are wondering what it is. And then we have what happened in the Vegas, you know, UFO encounters and, even though some things it's been debunked, but the, the official report, according to the news, who actually put cameras up around the family's house the next day and are still investigating. And then we have TikTok across the world. People are investigating all kinds of alien stuff on a local citizen level. But earlier this year, Stanford University professor, now this is huge, and prominent UFOologist. He's one of the most prominent UFOologists. And when I say that, it's not like a cryptozoologist or somebody outside. It's somebody who says this, you know, and, and uh, the government asks questions too, and he's an advisor for many different groups who are in this space. That He says he 100% believes extraterrestrials have not only visited the Earth, but have been here for a long time and may still be on the planet today. So we have the world's leading expert, one of them, is saying, Dr. Gary Nolan, who's a professor of pathology at Stanford's medical school, He's made the stunning claim during the last week's SALT, I connected this actually a few months ago, conference in Manhattan at the session titled The Pentagon Extraterrestri Extraterrestrial Intelligence and Crashed UFOs. The moderator, Alex Klukas, asked Nolan if he believes extraterrestrial life has visited Earth. 
And the professor replied, I think you can get a step further. It hasn't just visited. It's been here a long time and it's still here. You know, people talk about the wow signal looking for extraterrestrial intelligence. The wow signal is just people see it on an almost regular basis. And that's the communication that's already here, Nolan said. ABC News did a recent story on how uh, Christian theologians are preparing for extraterrestrial life. It, it was super interesting to me when I read it because basically there's a lot of theologians around the Christian and Catholic world that are actually preparing, you know, this is this is truth. And we got to like look at how to prepare for the theology behind extraterrestrial life. And that they most theologians agree that if there is extraterrestrial life, it doesn't debunk the Bible. It actually, the Bible and people's faith will be more needed to understand it. And even the collective ha hacker group just last week, Anonymous has released a report that NASA is about to announce alien life that has been visiting already. And we've also had uh, uh, not one, but two people lost in airplanes or lose it on airplanes saying that passengers next to them turn into some other being. Reptilians, anyone? <laughs> Things are just getting weirder. So do aliens fit within a Christian worldview? And that's a huge thing. Do they fit within Christian theology? Some charismatic Christian leaders are releasing videos on social media about the nefarious satanic or even Nephilim agenda using some extra biblical text to prove their point. Other Christians are debunking current alien pandemics, saying that it's governmental distraction, and they're basically... Um, agnostic when it comes to aliens, but some of the greatest Christian leaders in history had a much more open, although cautious mindset about them. And I think that's interesting that you have people all hundreds of years ago who were theologians and even people a hundred years ago, or even C.S. Lewis, who had a much more like, I, I guess, Christian bigger worldview or universal view that God is big enough to have, you know, and our theology is big enough to actually have aliens involved with it if we need it to be involved with it. So what is your view of aliens? So as a Christian, there's a lot of different perspectives, but I'm gonna go over some of them because maybe you've never heard of these, or maybe it, it will help stimulate your viewpoint and your theology over it as well. But I'm gonna look at some of those big ones today. There's basically like five main positions floating around about, you know, and the Christianity around Christian circles. And are they, you know, are they demons? Well, that's one of them. Aliens, a lot of people believe they're demonic deceptions. Some Christians suggest that aliens and alleged alien encounters could be tricks of demonic forces. The idea is that demons might be masquerading as extraterrestrials to lead people totally away from God and cause confusion and fear. Now, that's a that's a big one. That's one that people have said for many years, especially in the charismatic Pentecostal cultures. Well, one step further that is aliens can be seen as unfallen beings. It's a second perspective that aliens could be creatures from other planets that God created who did not fall in sin like humans did, and they might live in harmony with God's will, untouched by the sins that plagued our world, and they might just be checking in on us, or they might be praying for us or connected to us somehow. And that's another theory that uh, several different theologians have investigated through the years. There's another perspective that many kind of, of the conspiracy side of Christianity believe and again, you don't have to be a conspiracist to believe this, but it really, you can, uh, you can go down this rabbit hole for days on YouTube, but aliens are Nephilim. That's another thought. It's another belief held by some Christians and that the aliens can be met, Nephilim mentioned in Genesis, the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men. And lots of Christians think that, you know, they might not be extraterrestrials, but rather a kind of spiritual being, maybe that when this offspring died, that they actually um, became like a, a, a kind of a still living spiritual being until the end of the age when God judges everything. And they're still at work today because though their human bodies died, they're still out there doing something that they still have an agenda that they didn't go to hell. They didn't go to heaven. They're kind of lost in a pur purgatory. Some people even go into the fact that there was giants, that the Nephilim offspring were giants and that these giants, when they died, became spiritual beings that are no, not judged, but are waiting until the internal judgment. And there's a lot of different theories around Nephilim. There's been a lot of extra um, biblical books, even some of the books that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that mentioned uh, spiritual beings like the Book of Enoch. And these aren't wrong to read, and it's not wrong to look into. But once you get into it, a lot of times there's a whole uh, Nephilim agenda kind of theology that builds around it to where it can actually dismantle your hope and what God's doing. It can dismantle your, your faith and what God's doing. Now, again, I'm not telling you not to look into it, but when you do it, remember that Jesus is on the throne, <laughs> that God is winning and that the enemy is not. And so we're going to 
look into that, but you look into that with eyes of faith for who God is and what he's doing and how oh, I've seen even people go down the, now this is true. People have believed that there's certain people who are hybrids now from the Nephilim, that there's still sons of God having sex with the daughters of men. And that there's, you know, there's now hybrid beings and these hybrid beings can only be killed by like copper. And so you have to train yourself with copper weapons and ammunition. I mean, it gets really crazy once you go down this path. So this one out of all of them is the leading where people who lend to a more of a conspiracy mindset, go down this path. So you just got to be careful with this one. But there's another one, which is aliens are part of God's creation. This is one that many people commonly accept, a more open-minded viewpoint held by especially evangelicals that are conservatives, that Christians, you know, if indeed there's extraterrestrials in any forms, they're part of God's vast, diverse creation that he created a billion stars and a billion universes. And these believers tend to see potential alien life as yet another testament to the immense power of the creative God. So, you know, the, finally, there are Christians who believe that humans are unique in the universe, that God created all this around us, all the stars, all the universes, as a love letter to us to show us how much he loves us. And we're made in God's image. And in this view, other intelligent life forms don't exist. And reports of alien encounters might be explained by natural phenomenon, human misunderstanding, or even conspiracy of the governments, you know, trying to distract us from things that are happening in the world around us. But remember, these are just some of the possible perspectives. These are kind of the main ones. And the individual beliefs obviously vary significantly based on one's interpretation of Christian faith and a biblical worldview, understanding of the universe, understanding of scripture. And I want to encourage you to really prayerfully think about these things as we move forward, especially with all of the different, man, encounters people are having, whether it be alien abductions, which a lot of Christians are saying that they've had, whether it be demonic principalities or spirits that people have had visitations by that look like the aliens, whether it be whatever it is that the government reporting UAPs, like nonstop right now. And people are posting them on social media almost daily. There's UAPs that are being seen around the world. So what does this mean for us today? Well, again, we have to focus on what God's doing. We have to focus on who God is. And as we focus on that, it takes anxiety and the fear for the unknown out of us because we don't know so many things. We live in a universe of the unknown. I think we don't know what's in the bottom of the ocean. We don't know what's in forests that haven't been explored yet. There's still vast parts of the world like the Congo that's been unexplored. We don't know a lot of things. And part of our Christianity is that we have a father who knows everything. And so we get to follow him. And I want to encourage you, if you've been in a place of anxiety about this, trust God, trust that he's going to lead you, trust that he's going to show you, and don't get caught up in the fear and the anxiety that comes along with this. But give me some of the comments below or write us at info at bullsministries.com. If you have alien stories or UAP stories or videos or or uh, pictures. I want to see them. I'm really investigating this. I'm super curious. I haven't landed where I believe yet. I've studied out all of these different viewpoints, and I'm really prayerfully thinking about this and reading the, all the scriptures of creation and all the scriptures where there, and some of these extra biblical books are not wrong to read, and they don't confuse you as a Christian when the Bible is your sword. The Bible is your main uh, handbook. It's not wrong to read extra, you know, biblical books. I mean, all teaching books of modern times are extra biblical. They're not Bible canon. So it's okay to read other books, but not okay to highlight those books above the word of God. And that's, what's really important. So wanted you guys to think through this with me and I want to hear from you. So what do you think? 